your comms leader at the Beaver Trust, is that right? So what, what's uh, that involve and what's what's the Beaver Trust? <laughs> uh, so so um, Beaver Trust is a very new charity. It's been going for about a year and a half or so. Um, it started as like a startup enterprise. Um, with, and, and the people who founded it have incredibly interesting backgrounds and are involved in all sorts of um, big environmental NGOs globally and things. And they felt that there was a gap for a charity that, that um, really focused on ecosystem restoration and specifically riparian landscapes um, because wetlands and rivers are some of the most rich environments that we have and yet they're some of the most in danger of, uh, of uh, you know, some of the most depleted. Um, and so they wanted to, to have a charity that was quite maverick, quite dynamic, um, interested in, in saying the unsaid and talking about the difficult um, hurdles that ecosystem restoration presents, especially in the UK. Um, so Beaver Trust became a thing. Uh, they use, it's very much, of course, about the beaver. But uh, the beaver, as I said before, is also a totem, a metaphor for a wider landscape restoration and change. Um, and it helps itself by being an incredibly charismatic, uh, fascinating mammal that has an incredible story of its own um, that people need to hear. And so uh, I came on board in April. I just worked part time um, and uh, I came I joined when they were at a point where they really needed a bit of an oomph with their comms because they'd done all of this amazing groundwork and they were at a time where they needed to to, to become known and show, show the world that they are a, a player and that they are an important charity to support and know about. Um, so I help uh, relay messages about beavers, answer difficult questions. We get beavers... Uh, involve a lot of interesting stakeholders because they are disruptive they are a pain in the arse in the landscape <laughs> especially in a landscape that hasn't seen them for 400 years and has adapted to a way of life without the second biggest rodent in the world yeah on their doorstep <laughs> yeah. um so it's all about forming we're really really um keen on collaboration and coming together so drawing ngos together Hopefully we all have the same incentives and the same messages that we want to communicate. So one of our big drives is to try and come together and put heads together and tackle these problems as a big sort of coalition, as opposed to all have always having separate agendas and stuff. So uh, yeah. we convened a pioneering collaboration of 39 NGOs, including the Wildlife Trust, Wild Trout Trust, um, RSPB, of course, Woodland Trust, things like that. Um, to, to present our argument to the government and say, hey, we need a national strategy, we need beavers back in England, we need them legalised and we need uh, a management strategy so that we can coexist. Um, so it's just been an incredibly beaver heavy summer, but it's been fascinating uh, because a lot, of, a lot of exciting things have happened, um, but there's also a lot still to do. Yeah. So could beavers be reintroduced anywhere or do we need to be a little bit more selective then? Um, at the moment, we're focusing on prioritising catchments that would really benefit from beavers. Yeah. So beavers are really well known for helping mitigate flood impact by slowing the peak flow of water. So their dams basically just slow the rush of water so that it takes more time to have an impact. So you've got more time to prepare and mitigate for a flooding event. Um, so uh we're at the moment trying to work at identifying catchments that will have a high chance of flooding um and whose surrounding land could could occupy beam as well um that's the plan at the moment uh at the moment you still need to apply for a license from defra to have beavers and they have to be in an enclosure because they can't just roam free at the moment but okay. we are steering the conversation forward so that one day hopefully soon the enclosure fences can be cut and beavers can roam be um, and i think something important to say here is that there's a lot of um worry and quite rightly so because um if you don't beavers are complex mammals and if you don't know enough about their behavior you can assume a lot um that there's a worry that beavers if the fences are cut that they'll just proliferate like rabbits all over the country and there'll be beavers left right and center and it'll be you know like 
rodents everywhere. But um, beavers are actually by nature incredibly territorial. So they actually self-manage their populations by being quite feisty towards each other. So you have a beaver group, a couple of miles upstream, you have another beaver group, they hate each other, they don't hate each other, but they sort of, <laughs> you know, they don't wanna, they don't wanna mix. No. So, um, you know, you're not gonna get beavers everywhere because they're quite vicious towards each other and they will just kind of breach carrying capacity that albeit it's probably higher than our rivers can, uh, in terms of socially, in the farming, the farmland socially around can, manage but um basically beavers aren't just going to run riot they do kind of reach back and say right you know let's just stop the mating and <laughs> relax let's just have a cold <laughs> shower let's calm it down a little bit <laughs> that's exactly what they say yeah. <laughs>